Hi, you have been given a task to do a user interface for a stationary shop. They do the life size wall decals based on your selection. They have provided us with the passive layer, meaning the actual interface, how it should look like. And we have been given the selector or the indicator, meaning whenever we select any of these characters, it should just appear on your user interface like so. So we have been given an indicator. We have been given a passive layer. All that we have got to do is now create an active layer. So let's turn this indicator layer off at the moment, add a new layer, call it active underscore for now move it up and what we want to do is with that newly created layer selected i want to fill this out with whatever color we have selected now we turn off the passive layer it has created a cutout for us now we have been using red color previously to define our active regions. So I just fill those areas out with the same color that we used for the previous projects. Now that I have got my active regions defined, we can get rid of this green color or we can leave it there for now let's actually get rid of it it doesn't really matter what you do with it but let me actually get rid of it so that there is a uniformity in what we are doing we have already given it an active layer name so we call it active now we have got an active layer we have got the passive layer, we have got an indicator, we have got everything now that we need. So let's say what we need to do now uh, to integrate it with Python. Let's start exporting these layers. So I exported as it as active layer or active image. To export, select passive layer, export it as passive image. And let's do something about this indicator as well. So now we are doing a checkbox and whenever something selected, we want this checkbox to appear on top of that passive image. But when it's not selected, we do not want anything to be on top of that passive layer. So the easiest way to do it is create a transparent layer of the same size as this indicator. Now, sometimes, let me give you a tip here. Sometimes when you bring these indicators over, you see that it's the size of the whole window. That is called a canvas size. Whereas what we want for the indicators is to be the size of the indicators are the area that the pixels cover. So the way that we do is we select the layer or the indicator layer, and then we go to layer, crop to content, and now it's just the size of that tick there. So what we want to do now is make sure that nothing is selected and nothing is. If it was, I would have clicked none there. And now I want to press Control C by selecting the layer. Go to File, Create from Clipboard, 
and it creates a new image of that size. I just want nothing there. So I call it indicator up. And let's bring it back to our project here. So now we can say we have got two indicators, indicator files or two indicator layers. One is indicator off. Let me rename it to off. Let me rename the other file to on. So that's off, that's on. It's just a transparent layer. So what's gonna happen is when there is nothing selected or we want to toggle the selection, it is actually going to draw this transparent box on top. Whereas when we have got selected something, it's actually going to draw this tick mark. So we want two different sort of icons here as to speak, one for on, one for off. So let's export these indicator layers as well. So I've done a Python script to do it for GIMP. So the way that you do it is you go Python tools up on the top, and then you click export indicator layers. And it's going to export it for us into the same folder where you saved this project or this XDF file. And we are going to use these two images that have been exported into our Python project. So let's move on and see what we need to do or what are the next steps now that we have exported all the required layers to different images. So the next step for us now is to run the Python script. So it brings up this open dialog. We select active file, click open, brings up the file, open dialog team, load passive file image, select passive file, click open, and then brings up another dialog box. Here. We haven't created a positions file yet. So we create a new file, name it cartoon positions. You can name it whatever you like, select it, file name, open, and it should bring up this window for us. Now the size of this window is the same as size of our GIMP image or the canvas size of the GIMP image that we have been working with. So let's do a quick sanity check. Go back to active view. We right click it wherever a text entry box pops up. It means that area has been detected correctly. And we do a quick sanity check. All of the areas so far, they're going well. Yep, and now we need to do is give all of these active areas a unique name. So because we are working with checkboxes, so we call it checkbox, that's a control type, colon, the group of these checkboxes. So I call it STKR and then hash sign and then I give a unique name to it let me call it item one and I'll have to repeat it for all of these images here so let me do that And now that I have given 
a unique name to all of the active areas. Let's see what we need to do in Python to put some life into these dead pixels here. Now that we have position files in place, all that we need to do is just copy this piece of code from style three class and change some of the items here. So we want to change the passive image. We want to give it a path to the positions file. Then we need to give it a path for the PNG file that we use for the items that are selected and that are not selected. That's how the sequence should be. So the first item should be indicator on, meaning checkbox displayed. The second item means checkbox taken away. So I've created a list of the unique names that we assigned to all the cartoon characters that we had. And this is to load all the active areas. So let's see what we get. So that's the same size as the size of the canvas that we had on GIMP. And now as we hover over, it highlights it, you click it, and it actually puts a check mark on the top. You click it again, it takes it away, and you can see the status here. So this is the command that is displaying this or that is printing this to the console. Now we can select, deselect any number of items. So the stationery shop can now print these wall decals based on user selection. That's all that we had to discuss on how to use a style tree checkboxes. There is a default checkbox demo in the class itself. Let me show that to you. So this is the default, one of the samples that I have included in style tree class. So as we hover over, select that item, if I click it, puts a tick mark, click it again, takes the tick mark away. So it only highlights it when we hover over mouse over the active region. So as we can see, it's very well defined all the active regions. So if we click anywhere outside the active region, the highlighted part gets highlighted. So that's how we use style three checkbox.